Let's learn how to create those concrete barriers using military roadblocks or construction zones for your next scale model build. My name is Jorge D'Amico and in today's episode I will show you my process of making New Jersey barriers in 135th scale like these ones using XPS form. At the end of this video, I will share three bonus techniques that will take them to the next level, improving the quality of your next scale model scene. On this show, we will cut some paper, saw some balsa wood pieces, make a three-dimensional template, and play with a thermal wire cutter. And don't worry about taking notes now. Feel free to watch the video until the end. The step-by-step -step guide with the materials and tools I used is available for download for free. The link is in the description below. So let's jump right into it. A jersey barrier is a modular concrete structure employed to separate lanes to reroute traffic, protect pedestrians and workers during a highway construction. They are named after the U.S. state of New Jersey, which first started using it in the 1950s. Eventually, they became useful blockade devices employed in urban areas and military operations for security purposes. After searching for tutorials on how to create those roadblocks, most of what I found were a two-piece process in which you have to cut two separate pieces of foam and glue them together. I wanted a process to create barriers in one single piece of foam, a procedure that can be easily replicated and anyone can use it. During my research, I realized that there isn't a standard size for these barriers. Every country or place makes them based on their local needs. But in general, they look the same and have similar dimensions. After transponding the measurements to scale, I present here the step-by-step -step guide to make realistic and accurate jersey barriers in 135th scale. We start by printing the template cage pieces. These will be the building blocks for the three-dimensional template we will put together. Make sure the short profile of the template piece number 5 measures 2.5 centimeters. This will guarantee the size of the pieces and the final cage accuracy. During this phase, we will cut all the individual pieces from the printed page positioning them on the balsa wood using the shape as a guide to mark with a pen the cutting lines. Cut all the individual pieces following the guidelines on the balsa wood, making sure the angulated sides of the pieces 1 and 2 match. If necessary, use a sanding element to confirm that they are perfectly even. Glue the pieces together according to the assembly instructions on page 2. First with white or PVA glue and then with CA glue to secure a stronger bond. Now our three-dimensional template is ready. It is time to prepare the foam blocks so they fit snugly inside of the template. First, I made a few passes on my big piece of XPS foam on the wire cutter just to make sure all sides were straight. Then we will use the paper pieces as guides to assist with the dimensions during this process. Use the long profile on template number one to measure the height of the block, then make the cut. Use the short profile of template number four to measure depth of the block, then make the cut. Use the long profile of template number five to measure the length of the block, then make the cut. With our foam block now ready and inserted into the balsa wood three-dimensional template, it's time to make the final cuts, allowing the wire of the foam cutter to follow the angulated profile of the template. Each pass will create one profile. We will have to make two passes, 
one on each side of the foam block. The process is simple. The tricky part is to find the proper way to hold the template with the foam, allowing the wire to pass through the foam in one single shot, without hesitation. If you hesitate and mess up with the pace of passing wire through the foam, you will have an inconsistent cut, ruining the final result. Don't be afraid to try and make mistakes. It took me a few passes until I got it right. By the way, sometimes these barriers come in a form of a half section. Instead of having the two angulated profiles, they only have one in one side and a totally flat back. It's very easy to reproduce them as well. Just follow the same step to cut one side of the profile and don't proceed in cutting the second profile. Make equal marks on both ends of the foam. I used 5 millimeters and made the cut which will produce a half barrier section. Now that you have your barriers ready, you can add an even more realistic feature to it. Drainage slots at the bottom. These are notches created to allow rainwater to flow and not be obstructed by the concrete barrier. We will use the template number five. Make the two notches at the base of the foam before proceeding in cutting the two profiles described on the previous steps. Try to make these notches very shallow, so you can trim them properly with a small metal sanding element. While you try this method, be patient, be willing to make a few mistakes and persist. And don't throw away the pieces that don't work and the foam leftovers. They will be very useful on the next steps, as the final product is very realistic. By the way, you can make longer barriers if you want. The process is basically the same. You only need to use the top and base long sections available on page 3 of the document when building the three-dimensional template. Remember that the document is available for download for free. The link is in the description below. Okay, remember in the beginning of this video I mentioned that I would share three techniques that would take your jersey barriers to the next level, making them stand out even more on your next diorama or vignette? So here they are. Barriers meant for short-term placement, especially in military and security uses, might include steel rebar loops embedded in the top surface for rapid hook and cable system lifting. First, we will create the rebar using a 0.2 mm metal wire using a power rotary tool, clipping both ends of the wire into the tool, looping and securing the opposite end and letting the power tool do its magic. Second, we will cut the rebar in smaller sections of 1 cm each. Finally, with the help of a toothpick, we will bend the rebar pieces into a U shape. Now we are ready to position them on the barriers, gluing with PVA glue. The next technique is about creating scars, bullet holes, and random damage on the barriers. We will use extra thin liquid cement. The cement will bite into the foam, creating random marks on it. Be careful to do not apply too much cement, as it can create more texture than what you are looking for. Play with the foam leftovers using very small amounts of cement until you achieve the result you are looking for. This last technique is optional in case you created the long barrier sections. We will position the arm of the wire cutter on a 75 degree angle mark. Use a piece of wood to extend the reach closer to the wire and make the cut. 
Finally, we will trim the angulated end of the barrier to the desired size. And there you have it, the final result, jersey barriers for your next 135th scale project. Stay tuned because on the next episode I will go over painting and weathering these barriers we just created. I hope this tutorial can inspire and help you create your own jersey barriers for your next builds. Let me know your feedback in the comment section below. You can find the link to download the PDF file with the materials, tools and instructions to follow along for free in the description below. It describes all the steps you saw me following in this episode. And if you like this video and you'd like to see me creating more content like this one, please give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Oh, and don't forget to click on the bell icon as well so you can keep up to date every time I post something new. Thanks for watching, we see each other on our next episode. Ciao!